Karen, six months ago at the beginning of March, I interviewed you and at that time you had terminal cancer. You, you were preparing for a future that wasn't very long. You're here today and you're smiling. What's happened? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's quite a story. Um, on the 18th of August, I went to see my consultant and she gave me the news that I was in remission. And I've not been the same since. I, I can't take the smile off my face. I'm so happy now. Um, yeah, it was a miracle. <laughs> Daniel, our son, was with us. Yeah. We weren't expecting anything. And, and Daniel and I came out with these huge grins over her face, and Karen was crying. And <laughs> I imagine people in the waiting room going, now, is she dying or is she going to live? You know. Um, so it just was a very yeah. strange feeling because we were just floating out and Karen was crying. It was, it was the strangest feeling because in the morning I had terminal cancer. At lunchtime, I had my consultant appointment and I came out of her office being cancer free. And the jump was huge, absolutely vast. And to go from terminal cancer to being cancer free, I couldn't get my head around that at all. It, was, it took me a week to get my head around it. I couldn't refocus on anything because all I thought about was my cancer for the last two and a half years. And now I had to refocus thinking about normal life again, and I couldn't do it. I found it very hard. But it only lasted for about a week, and then after that, the joy just started bubbling out. Um, but it's quite, quite hard to go from that kind of news, terminal cancer, to suddenly being cancer-free. That's not an easy jump to make in one, just one second, just like that. I almost felt, felt guilty that I had got my life back when I know a lot of people I know who die of cancer. And I think, why me, Lord? Why, why has my life been spared? And why has this person died? And I, I have no answer for that. And I can't say why. It's certainly nothing to do with me. Um, it's by grace and by grace alone. But I believe the promise in James 5 that the prayer of faith will heal the sick and God will raise them up and I believe that and um, I believe that God can either raise, raise up a person who is ill now in this life or if not in this life then when Jesus comes we will all be raised up then. So some people are raised up in this life and praise God for that. Other people have to wait until the resurrection and then they will praise God because all of us will be raised up because the prayer of faith will raise, will raise us up. And that's the promise of God and I believe that promise. It actually took me a while to uh, actually believe that she was all right. And you know, you live with the possibility that, hey, tomorrow the news might change. Yeah. And, that, and that's the reality. For, I mean, who knows, tomorrow I might be found of uh, some illness that's going to take my life. Uh, I think the thing that helped me uh, cope with the joy part of it, as it were, uh, and, and balancing that. In fact, the, within an hour of us walking out of the hospital, I had a phone call from a friend. And I was bursting to tell this friend, Karen has just been cancer free. Uh, and fortunately I waited because the friend said I'd rung to tell me that her, her brother had just died of cancer. And so right there and then I was, in that very moment, I was holding uh, sadness and joy at the same time. It was, and it was kind of difficult to juggle them. Um, and and you, you, you go through thinking, am I supposed to be radiantly joyful all the time or am I supposed to have a balance of sadness and, and joy? Another friend of ours uh, suggested to us that there's always a reason to be sad because the world is broken. Even if you're well, it's a broken world we live in. And so you, you, you know, we have not yet got to the place Karen was talking about where, where the Lord raises you up into joy that's everlasting. Uh, and I, I think that's part of the struggle. You live with these two, two realities of joy and sadness because of the world around you. There's sadness every day. And I think that helped me, this friend's statement to me, that um, no matter how well you are, we live in a broken world. 
and we live with that sadness. A broken world, but a world where you're also now living with great hope. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And maybe hope, hope is there between the sadness and the joy. You're hoping for that day when joy is complete. Yeah.